So it's 57. Sorry. This is your, your how old you are. I have 57 episodes, 57 years. We restarted this because we were having trouble connecting. So once again, just need one person to say they can see and hear, and hopefully we won't have this uh, connection issue again, and we can get started right away. Apologize for the delay. We got nine. Right, but can they see and hear? All right, we're going to assume you can see and hear, and hopefully we won't have any more connection issues. This is a free service from Facebook, so when it doesn't work, I apologize, but yes. I don't know what else I yes. can do. All right, here we go. So I am making a recipe today, as I am probably almost every week of Weight Loss Wednesday going forward, because you spoke, I listened, you said you wanted more recipes. And I'm going to be doing a recipe every week once my new book comes out, but until then, I'll be doing recipes that either didn't make it in my book or recipes from my previous book, Unprocessed, that you may not be familiar with. So today I'm going to make nutrient-rich mashed potatoes. Two episodes ago, I had Steve Middleman co-hosting, and he made the most delicious mashed potatoes. The only problem was, is it only made enough for me, Kenny, and Charles? It was only four pounds of potatoes. It was so good, though. But it was very good. But these are going to be very good, too, Kenny, and they're going to be even more nutritious because we have a question today about sneaking vegetables in for spouses and kids that don't like vegetables so I want to try to nutrify them make them a little bit more nutrient rich it'll still be rich and creamy and delicious and it's gonna make more so I'm using my eight cup excuse me not eight cup eight quart instant pot it's my favorite instant pot if you don't have an instant pot I recommend the eight quart because it's bigger you can get ten dollars off if you use my initials AJ on instantpot.com my code does not work on Amazon unfortunately it would be nice if it did so in the Instant Pot, I have four pounds of organic Yukon Golds, which is Trader Joe's. They sell them in a four-pound bag. That's how come I know it's four pounds. So I'm putting it in the Instant Pot, and I'm going to fill water up just to the top. And this, this is a, one of those little tea things that makes hot water really fast. By using hot water, it's just going to go quicker. And I'm using the rack that comes with the Instant Pot, and I'm just putting water in up to the top. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add about a pound and a half of parsnips. I love parsnips. They make them so creamy. And a pound and a half of cauliflower. And I'm going to put that all in. So now it's going to make a lot more. But That's pre-washed cauliflower, Yes, pre-washed. Right? Everything's organic. So I'm putting it in because I want to make more. And then I'm going to put it in the Instant Pot. I'm going to press the manual button for 12 minutes like we did for the other one. I'm gonna push this aside. Whew, it's hot in here, guys, with the lights, but here we go. So now, I, while this cooks, I can officially welcome you to episode 57 of Weight Loss Wednesday. I'm Chef AJ. If you're famil unfamiliar with my work, I'm the creator of the Ultimate Weight Loss Program, and this is where I answer your questions about healthy, permanent, and sustainable weight loss. And the best way to ask a question is through my website, which is eatunprocessed.com. While you're there, you can check the little box if you want to be on my mailing list so you can find about find out about wonderful things like the upcoming Ultimate Weight Live, I can't speak, two weeks off, I can't speak, live Ultimate Weight Loss Conference in Vegas. So why don't we talk about that first, Kenny? You're going, right? Ultimate Weight Loss, I was great. The first one was amazing. Mm -hmm. It truly turned, I had no idea how big this thing was. And yeah how much love is in there and again if you're trying to make a difference in your life with your weight or or just your health health come learn and you'll be on stage next year tickets went on sale january 1st as promised you can find out more about it at the ultimate weight loss page at eatonprocess.com but for the next four weeks and we won't extend it past January 31st. You can save $250 on the conference. $200 on the conference, plus you'll get the meet and greet with our speakers. It's not a formal lecture. The conference takes place in Las Vegas at the Tuscany Resort. It's off the strip, so you don't have to deal with the gambling and all the things that people don't like about Free Vegas. parking, too. Free parking, huge suites with couches and refrigerators and microwaves. Some $79 a night for the room. Some people like five people in the room. So it's August 31st, Friday, and September 1st and 2nd, which is a Saturday and Sunday, and it is Labor Day weekend of 2018. It's the same team that always does these conferences, myself, John Pierre, Dr. Ellen Goldhammer, and Dr. Doug Lyle. But this year, as a keynote speaker, we have none other than Dr. Neil Barnard, who knows a lot about weight loss and food addiction. So I hope you'll be there. And all the food is UWL compliant. So I hope you all had a happy new year. I hope you had an abstinent new year. We have a lot of people in Ultimate Weight Loss and Mastery that sailed through the holidays without a relapse, and we had some that Fell off the wagon a little bit, but that's okay. All that matters is that you get back on now. You know, I think, Kenny, more people start diets on January 2nd or start gym memberships on January 2nd than any other day of year. And most people 
fall off their diet and stop going to the gym right around Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. So we want you to live your life in a manner so that you don't have to go on a diet because the Ultimate Weight Loss Program it's not a diet, it's a lifestyle. Kenny eats this way pretty much, Charles does, Dr. Goldhammer for 40 years raises his kids that way, Sharon McRae, it's a, it's a healthy, safe, sane way to eat whether you want to lose weight or not, whether you want to reverse food addiction or not. It's the way our ancestors ate throughout most of human history and how people in parts of the world today, that instead of fasting, we feed and we do cooking lessons every day and we have talent shows and Iron Chefs and I try to broadcast as much live as I could from True North. And if you are on this page, if you simply go to videos, you'll see a lot of the presentations that I was able to broadcast. I couldn't broadcast other people's without their permission. I but saw yeah. someone, I saw um, Mr. Goldhammer, Dr. Goldhammer's face on you. Yeah, absolutely. There's a very funny skit from the talent show, so I encourage you to watch those as well. You know, um, all these, uh, these aren't really questions today. These are topics that the mastery students asked me to talk about but I do want to answer one question from Simone because I just thought it was an interesting one I've gotten it before but not this time of year and she said you know did I did I cheat you know the, uh, the, during the holiday house is going to restaurants not a treat a punishment so the food at True North is so extraordinary anyway but even more so during the holidays uh, chef Ramses Bravo made us pizza if you can believe it with with grilled uh, kabocha squash and Hawaiian pizza with pineapple and rainbow chard. We had pizza. Uh, Chef Mauricio made us these casseroles, these stratas with, with black beans and plantains. And, and I mean, uh, he made me nachos with potatoes and plantains. I mean, there's no deprivation. So there's no reason to, quote, cheat because everything I eat is a treat and having the healthy body and more importantly, the calm, stable brain, that's the treat. But to address the other part of your question do I ever have cravings yeah for collards for example so we were eating a lot of greens at True North more than here because they have this thing called the Cleveland steamer where they can steam like you know you know 20 pounds at once which vegetable for breakfast his VFB which is called cruciferous crunch so I made him collard greens and uh, he just was taking forever to eat them, and I ate them, and I apologized to him, but that's, that, those, that's, what, that's what I crave. You know, once in a while, I have what's called, uh, at least in acting, when I used to study acting with Joan Darling over 30 years ago, I have what's called a sense memory, and I wouldn't really call it a craving, because it's not like I'm driven to go out and get it, but uh, it's, uh, I've suffered with IBS since forever, pretty much, but had stomach problems since I was at least four, and there, were, there was something that always quelled my, my stomach aches when I had them, and that was toast, specifically sourdough bread toast from craving, but I would think like, God, that would be good now because it would settle my stomach. So I, that is something I think about from time to time. Not Still in process. Oh, we're on live again, 56 okay. people. Okay, sorry about that. What is we're happening? Half. I am so, so we have a guys. Big I'm issue with Wi-Fi or the see, guys. That's Facebook why la today. when I did the last episode, I did it without Kenny and Eden sitting at the computer using a different technology through the map called Be Live. So I don't know how much they heard. So uh, I don't know what uh, where to start, and I apologize that this happens. And it's all better now. I know, but I don't know where I was. So do you guys remember what I was talking about? <laughs> you were talking about your trip to uh, to True North. True North. And then I was talking about somebody asked if I ever have cravings or if I ever have guilty indulgences. Right. So if it does, they're trying to reconnect again. Tell me immediately so I stop talking, okay? So so I do have a guilty indulgence. And I'm almost embarrassed to admit it, but that is... I know uh, what it is. Well, I don't know if you know, but it's white rice and Wendy's baked potatoes. So I don't go out and get these things on a normal daily basis, but when I'm traveling or I'm out longer than I thought I was going to be or didn't bring enough food with me, these are lifesavers to have enough starch. And... So, um, we're talking about sourdough toast, is what you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, well, I was talking about that every now and then I think of it fondly because of the way it used to settle my stomach, just like ginger ale did. But there's other things that settle it now. But that what the question was is, do I ever have cravings? I didn't really call those cravings because it's not like I was driven to go out and get it, it was something that I would just think about. So, um, white rice is great because it's delicious. I know it's not as nutrient rich, I don't make it myself, but you can get it pretty much oil-free and salt-free at almost every mall in America and every Chinese restaurant. And so when I do have it, I really enjoy it. Also, when I do have a stomach ache, it's the one thing that really settles my stomach. And, you know, I don't like supporting fast food restaurants, but I got to tell you, Wendy's makes best baked potatoes. I don't know how they get them so hot and fluffy, and they're inexpensive. And when I'm 
in the car and it's been hours since I've had food. Uh, there's a Wendy's everywhere, there's Wendy's at airports. So I would say those are my two guilty pleasures, Simone, which I don't indulge very often, but I do. So, all right, here we go. So, so we're doing good now, huh, Kenny? All right, yes? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So I uh, hope you didn't miss the part about the Ultimate Weight Loss Live Conference in Vegas. Tickets are on sale now for $250 off. So here's... $250 off? Yes, not $250. $250 off. How much is it? The tickets are $4.99 for the weekend. Gotcha. And the meet and greet is $50. But if you buy your ticket by January 31st, you get the $50 meet and greet for free, and you get $200 off your ticket price. That's only till February 1st. And if you have family members that want to come to the meet and greet or meals, we can charge you what we get charged for the meet and greet and, and lunches, which is $50 without having them having to come to the conference. And a lot of people do that with their children. So it, one of our mastery students, Angie, says that she thinks it's good to talk about the importance of a clean environment. That is one of the most important steps in being successful in this program, yet so many are still resisting. As it is a new year now, it's a good time to encourage everyone to purge any non-compliant food from their homes. Angie, you're a girl after my own heart. I couldn't agree with you more. And I know, Kenny, you said earlier that the people in Ultimate Weight Loss, which you're in, this is a mastery group, are sick of hearing about it, but I'm telling you, you guys, we talked about this at True North, right in front of Dr. Goldhammer. The environment is the number one predictor of your success. You can't eat something that isn't there. And all the experts, all of them, let's start with Dr. Doug Lyle, says that you have to work harder on your environment than you do yourself. So instead of going on another diet, instead of going on another exercise program, instead of weighing and measuring your food or counting calories, carbs, or points, why don't once and for all you do what's going to make the biggest difference and clean your environment? Your weight and your health and your life isn't going to change until your environment changes. I got a letter today, an email actually from somebody in the program who basically said that until she cleaned up her environment, her cravings never went away. And the minute she cleaned up her environment, her cravings finally went away. I had the spouse of one of the gals in Ultimate Weight Loss say, said, said to her, it's okay, say to me, says, you know what? I resisted it for a long time, but that bitch is right. It does make a difference, guys. And if you don't believe me, why not just clean up your environment for, say, 30 days and do an experiment? And then if it didn't make a difference, then please publicly shame me and tell me that I was wrong. You for me, I've done it where I've had taken the chocolate out of my house. Yeah. And the cravings aren't there, but when the chocolate's there, Absolutely. I eat it. Absolutely. When I go to mom's house, there's it's, chocolate there's and chocolate I know exactly there. where to go and I eat it. It's, it and this is, this, is not, um, this is not vegan propaganda. This is just basic, I took a college course in the addictive brain. This is just, this is, I don't want to say obvious because you're not believing me, but it's the same thing with any addiction. If you are somebody trying to quit smoking, you know, it's not a good idea not only to not have cigarettes in the house, but not even have matches to light a candle or ashtrays that you're now using for, for pocket change. These are cues and food addiction. Addiction is an environmental disease and it's triggered by cues in the environment. Just like when an alcoholic gets out of rehab, they don't have alcohol in their house if they want to be successful. If you went to prison for, uh, for drug use, for methamphetamine use, you don't get out of prison and then all of a sudden, Start working in a meth lab or, or just saying, well, I'm not going to have meth, but I'm going to keep making it for my friends. No. And so I, I feel bad for those of you that feel that you must make this crappy disease promoting food for your family. I don't believe that there ever is a must because there's always ways to negotiate a clean environment if you're willing. You know, it, when you can really finally say to your spouse and kids that this is the way it's going to be, take it or leave it, your self-esteem will skyrocket. If you know that this food is not good for you, why on earth would you feed it to the people you love the most? It doesn't make sense. Have your husband or your wife, if, if, if that's the case, read one of Dr. Furman, preferably both of his books, Disease Proof Your Child and Fast Food Genocide, and know that this is, this is not a joke. Feeding these foods is not gonna make anyone happy, healthy, it's not going to facilitate weight loss. So if you know that they're not good for you, why on earth would you feed it to your family? There's ways to get more calories in kids other than feeding them sugar and flour. I mean, if you want to feed them some of the higher fat, higher calorie plant foods like nuts and seeds and avocado, that's fine. If it's a trigger for you, we talk many times about getting the locked food safe. What's even better is getting a separate refrigerator and a separate cabinet. You can buy these, I've seen them at Home Depot, they have a lock, and then just ask your husband, if, if you're the wife, sometimes it's the other way around, but it's mostly the wives, to just please 
first choice is eat all non-compliant food out of the house. That's the best. Second choice is just to keep their food in the locked cabinet, in the refrigerator, and in the cabinet either in the garage or in the basement where you don't have to come in contact with it. And if you feel like you have to cook these foods for them, it's going to be infinitely more difficult for you to recover and lose weight. Because you, how are you going to do it? You know, I used to be a pastry chef, and when I went in for treatment for food addiction, they said, if you do not quit your job, you will not recover. And I took that. Okay, which Melanie was it? Melanie, how dare you call in the middle of Weight Loss Wednesday. If you joined us late, we are making some nutrient-rich mashed potatoes, and hopefully these will be ready before the end of the broadcast. So any comments on the environment? Are they saying that's just not possible for them? Well, Shelly said, she, uh, Sherry said from Maryland that she likes your earrings. That's what oh, we're great. At. Well, thank you. You know what? These don't match. These are from Charlotte's Gardens. Char Charlotte Davis from San Francisco makes them. She sells them at the Veg Fest. And I decided to get my favorite vegetable, but I couldn't decide if it was zucchini or artichoke, so I got one of each. Thank you for noticing. And speaking of what I'm wearing, so many of you have sent me wonderful Christmas presents but there's no card and when I call the company they won't tell me who it's from because they say for privacy reasons so if you are someone either in the general pop gen pop as they say in prison on my Facebook page or in ultimate weight loss that sent me a holiday gift I thank you so much and I'd like to wear it on the air and acknowledge you but I didn't get any cards in any of the envelopes so please tell me what you gave me and who you are so who gave you the top you're wearing now okay well actually nobody gave it to me but I got it in Tampa Florida when I spoke at the veg fest I was with my friend Vanessa who often watches this show and it was like four dollars and I love it I love it so I don't usually wear uh, sweaters but uh, it's believe it or not it's really hot in here it's been warm in, in LA it's 68 degrees it's cold outside yeah so you guys have any questions about the environment do you believe that it's important or do you think it's not going to make a difference are they I know we Julie Weber says she has parsnips in her potatoes and it was yeah. a great addition yeah, it, absolutely you're not putting in so many parsnips that you're tasting parsnips I've been doing this for a while and hopefully Charles isn't watching and he doesn't know and the thing is the cauliflower you'll detect the taste of even less because there, there really is no discernible taste in cauliflower which brings us since nobody's arguing with me today about the environment I'll go to what Heather Goodman Goodwin my uh, maiden name was Goodman this is Heather Goodwin who's lost over 300 pounds on the ultimate weight loss program has a wonderful YouTube channel butterfly effect she said since we begin to enjoy whatever we eat habitually do you think it's a good strategy to sneak minute amounts of health promoting foods into the food of veggie hating spouses or kids so yes Heather but not minute amounts huge amounts but a little bit at a time and work your way up and you're absolutely right Heather that we actually develop taste preferences for what we habitually eat and it takes at least 15 tries of a new food for it to become a preferred food those of you that are parents know that often when you put the spoon to your baby's mouth they go like this and they go Tip, and they spit it out well if you don't ever try to feed them again they'll starve so you keep offering you keep offering eventually they eat it and they like it the only taste preference that's inherent in a human being is breast milk everything else is learned that's why in parts of the world they eat eyeballs they eat crickets they eat organ meats which most people in the US don't do because taste preferences are learned and the only way for you guys to like some of these foods you don't like like vegetables is to keep eating them now for kids it's you're not going to get a kid to just eat steamed kale for breakfast I know I'm that's ridiculous to just start out especially if they weren't raised in a healthy manner eating a lot of fruits and vegetables but what you can do with kids is most kids like smoothie smoothies especially sweet smoothies especially fruit smoothies I remember about 10 years ago I was doing a demonstration in an underprivileged area it was at a church and uh, they were not eating any fruits and vegetables they were eating Cheetos and Red Bull and so to get these kids to eat anything healthy was quite a challenge so I was doing some of the richer recipes from unprocessed like the brownies things with nuts and dates and the kids were actually eating it and liking it so when it came to vegetables what I did and, and I, they, I did not make this in front of the kids because if they saw the spinach they probably wouldn't have eaten it but I have a recipe in unprocessed called a nutrient rich chocolate smoothie that has about a half a pound of spinach in it and as long as the kids didn't see me make it they loved it it had dates and it had cocoa powder and almond milk but it had a lot of spinach in it but you can't taste the spinach because unlike kale it's not so bitter so the kids couldn't taste it and since they didn't see it being made they didn't know and so that's a great thing to do with kids you know and also like if you get a, a bottle 
that isn't see-through, like this one that Jean Pierre sells. This is actually a clearly filtered. You don't have to have uh, the the smoothie be chocolate, or because they won't necessarily see it. But that's what you might have to do at first to get kids to eat fruits and vegetables. One of the things with kids, and this goes along with the book The Pleasure Trap, where they talk about the conservation of energy principle. Oh man, you're really getting close, man. Get back off, back off. Just kidding. So. Um, I noticed that I was eating a lot more oranges and jicama at True North these last two weeks. Now, I love oranges and I love jicama, but I never eat them because for me it's so much work peeling an orange. Well, at True North, they're already cut up and they're cut up in half and half and half and half and then in half. So you've got these little easy to eat segments. And I, was, I love oranges, but I just I get so lazy. I love jicama, but it's so hard to cut. But it's always cut up in little cubes. Everything's ready. And the same thing is true for kids, guys. If you only offer them healthy choices, they will eat it. A child will not starve themselves to death, according to every pediatrician I've interviewed and Dr. Alan Goldhammer. You have to have healthy options available, even if you're not a kid, so that that is the default and so that it's easier to eat the healthy food than to eat the unhealthy food. Right now, most of you still have not cleaned up your environment and you give myriad excuses as to why, and so the default is always the junk food. But if you have healthy food ready, but not not just available, but ready. So not just have the apple on the counter, but have the apple cut up. It's gonna be a lot easier, especially for kids. Kids love shapes, kids love dipping. You can make one of my recipes like chocolate fondue and then have the fruit out for the kid after school to dip, but have it cut up. If you have vegetables cut up, not, you don't give them carrots and celery like this. You cut them up into kids size shapes and sizes and have a, a nice, Hummus ready that doesn't have oil in it, maybe for the kids a little tahini. But if all there is is healthy food, kids will eat it. If when you open your refrigerator, all you see is beautiful glass jars of prepped fruits and vegetables and cooked sweet potatoes, you will eat it. But the problem now is your environment is not full of the good stuff and you're still having too much of the bad stuff. It shouldn't have any, that's the truth. You know, here's the thing. Watch some of the interviews I've done with Dr. Doug Lyle. I'll be interviewing again either this week or next week. He talks about how willpower is a very short-lived commodity. You have about 20 minutes before you actually cave to the crave. But you don't have to use willpower to not eat something that's not in your house. And I know a lot of people say, oh, yeah, well, I'll go out for it. Really? At 11 o'clock at night when you're in this... 17 below zero, you're really gonna go out and get a donut? Yes, if you're a very, very severe food addict, some of you might, but statistically, if there is no junk in the house, statistically, you are so much less likely to go out and get it. But the problem now is you don't have to go out and get it. You just have to walk to your kitchen. You just have to walk to your cupboards. So please, this holiday season, let this be the year that you give yourself the gift of a clean environment. I know Christmas and Hanukkah is over, so you probably can't ask your family for another presence, but just say, family, please, if you wanna, want me to live a long, healthy life so I can be here to take care of you for 30 days, 30 days, even 28 days, till February 1st, please, let's just not have this stuff in your, the house, and let's just see if I do better. And the thing is, is it's never not worked. I promise you, until you clean your environment, your cravings will never, ever go away. And Kenny said it was true for him with chocolate, so why wouldn't it be true for you if you're an overweight food addict? All right, so Rose from Mastery says, what about New Year's resolutions and vision boards? I'm not really big on New Year's resolutions, so to speak. I, I like goals and I like short-term goals and long-term goals. Um, people seem to make resolutions and then, like I say, break them by Martin Luther King's birthday, but, but uh, Rose, I love the idea of a vision board. I can't get them right now, they're in the other room, but I know I've showed them to you before. These are like collages you make with words or pictures or both. We've been doing it for years. On New Year's Eve, we set our intention, whether it's a financial goal or a health goal. Uh, I have so many vision boards for different things, for yoga, for strength, for compassion. And you basically go to get magazines or you just go to Google Images and photos that inspire you and maybe phrases. And this is what you look at and you have them in every room in your house and you take a picture Picture of them and you have it on your phone as your screensaver so everywhere you go and if you especially if you feel like you're gonna relapse you look at this and you realize what your why is why you're doing this hopefully you have a compelling why that's not just to be thin because if that's the only reason you're doing this once you get thin you know you may relapse because now you're thin and you haven't done it for a greater reason like your health like the health of the planet like the health of the animals if you still haven't watched what i call the holy trinity forks over knives cowspiracy and earthlings please watch these and have your family even your kids watch these once you watch these three movies how could you not 
follow a whole food plant based diet. It's just I don't get it. Do you get it, Kenny? I don't get it. I don't know. But sometimes this last three, the last two of the yeah. three sounds a little are a little scarier to watch. Yeah. But uh, well, food. Four silver knives. Is Food Inc. What the hell? Eating what you alive. Yeah. One of those. Okay. So uh, Lori says that she has this idea, and it's a great idea, Lori, because we've actually done this in some workshops I've taken. Writing a letter to yourself as though it was the end of 2018. Seal the envelope, put it away to find it at the end of the year. We, I've done this with workshops where we set goals, but it's a great idea, and Lori did one and posted it on the mastery page, where you write a letter to dear you, yourself, and it's as if it's already happened and said, I'm so happy that now I achieved this goal and I'm at my ideal weight or close to my ideal weight and I have yeah, this calm stable brain and you write the letter that it's so inspiring that you can't wait on December 31st or whenever you decide to open it to read it and, and it's it, in a way it's, it's sort of like a vision board so that's a really cool exercise to do as well and I encourage you to do that you know uh, a lot of people suffered through the holidays they struggled they relapsed and now is when you want to prepare for this Christmas you don't want to wait until Thanksgiving to start thinking of a plan for how you're going to make it through the holidays. Start now. Do it now because can you imagine if you have 10 months of abstinence, clean abstinence under your belt, how easy it's going to be during the holidays? We worked so hard the last three months of the year with people in the mastery program just to get them abstinent from Halloween to January 2nd because then they would have a new frame of reference for the future because most people don't make it through the holidays abstinent and without gaining weight and and the weight they gain is weight that is not usually easily taken off so start now start preparing yourself for thanksgiving christmas hanukkah new year's 2018 have a plan now start practicing practice abstinence now and then when you get to the holidays it's going to be a piece of kale any questions from the live viewers? Oh, the pressure cooker. We're down to 11 minutes on that instapot yep absolutely some people have been talking about uh, the the What's in your house environment? Yep. And um, it's in your house, it's in your mouth. And I'm telling you, that applies to junk food and healthy food. Just like the collard greens, I couldn't resist eating my husband's breakfast. It was in the house, it's in the mouth. Marie was saying clean environment is critical, as I said above. Suspect that the reason my husband is not supportive of cleaning my environment is maybe he is scared of me improving my health. Well, um, you know, another one said about earthlings. Can well, sometimes, we sometimes earthlings? spouses sabotage us on purpose, and sometimes it's unconscious because they themselves are food addicts, or they're afraid if you get slender and healthy, you'll leave them, and that does happen sometimes. You know, um, we had this conversation. There was there was a couple of psychiatrists as patients this time again at True North, and we had this uh, this discussion ad nauseum and. They all said that if you have a spouse that won't support you, you got bigger problems than the junk in the house. That's a marital problem. And again, I'm not here to break up marriages. I'm here to get you guys feeling good about yourself so that you can live a happy, fulfilling life in the body that you were meant to live in and not have to suffer with the low self-esteem, with the shame from the food addiction, from the obesity, and the diseases that generally go with it. You know, most people, Kenny, are not just overweight. It's not just an aesthetic thing. It's a result of... of other things and so it's not just obesity it's obesity with diabetes obesity with autoimmune disease obesity with heart disease and so when we treat the food addiction through a program like the ultimate weight loss program an abstinence based program ours is sofas free when we start to recover from food addiction get that calm brain and stop eating the junk the weight comes off and it literally does come off another lady said that they put a lock on the garage for the second fridges so she stayed out of that, and That's great. it works for her. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm not saying that you will fail if you have an unclean environment, but so far out of 2,000 people, I've only seen one person succeed in an unclean environment, and I've never seen anybody in a clean environment fail. So anyway, so Nikki says, uh, Vision Boards as well, UWL Reboot. Um, that's, that's proprietary material for UWL, the Reboot Checklist, Nikki, so I'll talk to you guys about that on Saturday. So Yami says, talk about strategies for those that need a little extra to get the weight loss going. Well, I think the best strategy would be to go to True North because, man, I mean, we talk about Shada all the time. Shada lost 112 pounds on the Ultimate Weight Loss Program, has kept it off for uh, six years now, and she lost more weight at True North. She wasn't even trying 
that's what happens when you go to True North. I mean, I lost a pound in the last week. I, I wasn't trying, but it's just what's happened there. And what happens is you not only get inspired by all the other people and the doctors and the lectures, but the cleanest food imaginable, it's all sofas free. It's as much as you can eat, as often as you want, whenever you want. There's a 24 hour salad bar. And a lot of times that can really jumpstart weight loss. We have so many people there from Ultimate Weight Loss that were either fasting and free feeding, and a lot of them lost, you know, 25 pounds in the 10 days we were there. It's absolutely incredible. 25 pounds? Yeah, well, she was fasting, but absolutely. So a, a great way to get weight loss going is to go to True North, whether you fast or not. The other thing you can do, and this is, a, this is part of another question about intermittent fasting. So, um, that is something that Dr. Jennifer Morano talks about on the True North website, healthpromoting.com, and she gave a lecture on that on this subject uh, uh, January 1st, but her article is on healthpromoting.com. So intermittent fasting, there's many ways to do it, and she talked about all of them. The way that we prefer people do is where you just narrow the feeding window so that instead of eating all day from the minute you wake up, at six or seven in the morning till the time you go to bed, 10 or 11 at night, you basically narrow the time that you're eating. You don't, you don't narrow the amount or how much you eat, but instead of eating for 18 hours of the 24 hour day, you're eating for about six to eight hours. And that seems to work beautifully for people, both for enhancing weight loss and also for weight management. If you have a lot of weight to lose, you don't necessarily need to do intermittent fasting, but those that are getting closer to the goal weight, it's just another tool. It's also a tool that can increase longevity because we aren't meant to be eating all day, every day. The longer we stay in the resting phase, I believe it's called the catabolic phase, the more things healthfully happen to us when we're not constantly digesting food. So for most people in ultimate weight loss, the way intermittent fasting works is they wake up whenever they wake up, they usually do some form of meditation and exercise, and then they don't eat until usually about 11 o'clock, some as late as one o'clock. So that's their lunch. I mean, they're still having their vegetables for breakfast. They're not calling it breakfast because of the time of day. And then maybe they'll have their last meal at five, maybe six, but they'll be done by seven. So they're either eating, say, from 11 to seven or one to seven. So they're only spending six to eight hours of the day eating. And when you do that, you can eat as much as you want in that window. I don't know why it works. There's books written about it, like The Fast Diet by Dr. Fast, that explain why intermittent fasting work. But that is a tool. Now, if you're somebody that uh, gets up very early, early in the morning, like four in the morning. I have friends that do that. They'll have their first meal maybe seven or eight and their last meal one and two and they won't eat again till the next day. So it's it's not fasting as far as withholding food. It's just narrowing the, the feeding window is basically what you're doing. It's basically skipping a meal. It's basically either skipping breakfast or for some people skipping dinner. But that, that, that can work beautifully and I encourage you to learn more about how and why that works. But it's it's a really cool thing. We we don't need as much food as we think we need people and, and to eat be eating three meals a day and snacks every time between meals. That's Our ancestors didn't eat that way. One of the best things you can do is to really learn to eat when you're hungry. It's, I think it's harder to learn to stop when full sometimes because the food is so delicious on the Ultimate Weight Loss Program. But if you can really learn to eat when you're hungry, and my litmus test is, is if I'm not hungry enough to eat vegetables, I'm not hungry. Because when you're really hungry, even steamed zucchini will taste good. We have a lot of people discussing um, health issues because of the cold. Oh yeah. And Sharon is helping him get some black elderberry yep. and with, yeah, a lot um, of people olive have leaf extract. Guys, and things you like know that. what's really great if you're if you're prone to colds or catching colds. And my my pulmonary doctor, who's a vegan doctor, Artal, told me this when I got pneumonia on the cruise a few years ago, and I started doing it. It's something called the neti pot. And they, Sorry, Anna, the one that have it. the one they have at True North is the one I have where it's a plastic bottle. It's really easy. You don't have to like you don't have to turn your head really. It's a I think it's called by N E I L Neil M D. You can get it at any pharmacy, thrifty, and it, it comes with pre measured saline packets. It's very easy to use. And I felt I was coming down with a cold before True North, and I couldn't afford to be sick, so I was net neti potting instead of once a day, twice a day. So that's really really good thing to do. Uh, and you know, of course, you know, hand washing not just hand sanitizing, hand washing, and also hand sanitizing. I volunteer at a hospital, and sometimes I will wear a mask. I just, I'm not, I'm gonna protect myself. So whatever you can do. It's funny, I, I go around LA now, and I see, especially since the fires, I see people wearing masks all the time. It's not yesterday even, at the farmer's market. Even at Trader Joe's. So yeah, be, be safe and be healthy, of course, this time of year, so more, more people seem to get sick. So Meredith was saying about intermittent fasting, how not to eat three hours before bed when we get home late strategy. Well. 
you know, not having anything in your house to eat. Yeah. So, Kenny, even when this is done in three minutes, we might have to, um, actually, we want to get done by five, so we will release the pressure early if we have to. Normally, I like to let it come down to pressure naturally, but in the interest, I don't want to keep you guys here all night. But, but Meredith, the strategy, how not to eat three hours before bed, make sure that you have healthy food, especially enough starch with you earlier in the day so that when the time you get home, you're not driven to eat. Now, if you're driven to eat for emotional reasons or for what Dr. Lyle calls the cram circuit, which you can find out more information about this cram circuit on my YouTube page, please consider subscribing to my AJ Chef AJ YouTube page. That would be lovely. And I have lots of interviews with Doug Lyle, but the cram circuit is where he talks about how we are biologically driven to not only binge at night, but overeat. This is I can't explain it as good as him, but that lecture is there. So if you're doing the cram thing, well, then I guess have a cram muffin if you have to. But again, my philosophy is if you're not hungry enough to eat vegetables, you're not hungry. And what people are eating at night, Meredith, is generally not steamed kale. It's all the hyper palatable crap. So number one, the strategy is not having it in your house so you can't eat it. If you know, the, the most calorically dense thing in my house is beans, and I can't eat beans, so for me, the most calorically dense thing is rice. I, there's nothing really in my house that I can hurt myself with, but again, you know, it, it, beca it became a habit. I just don't eat at night. I am somebody that has IBS, and for my GI health, I can't, I can't because I need to be able to sleep soundly. If I don't, I wake up cranky, I wake up tired, and I wake up bloated, so I need to stop eating. What's you know, a good time to turn off the food intake? Well, every doctor I've talked to says a minimum of three hours, but if you have GI issues like me, five hours. So ideally for me, you know, True North, we didn't finish eating by six and I went to bed at 10, so it was about four. Some nights for me, it's only three. So again, the thing is, is try to eat more of your calories earlier in the day, like the Adventists say, breakfast like a king, lunch like a prince, dinner like a pauper. So. The thing is, is if you're eating at night, you're eating for emotional reasons, or you withheld starch during the day and you didn't eat enough. And again, I can't tell you how important it is to not be afraid of eating potatoes, rice, and beans. We get so many people that come to the Ultimate Weight Loss Program who lost weight initially on other programs that involved limiting or excluding starch or weighing and measuring, and they did well until they didn't do well because they were so hungry, and what they really were hungry for were starch. Starch is to the hunger drive what oxygen is to the breathing drive. You don't have to be afraid of starch. You have to be afraid of the high fat stuff that you put on starch, all the peanut sauces and the oils and the cheese. You cannot get fat eating carbohydrate, which is four calories per gram, unless you're eating with high fat foods. You cannot gain weight eating to the left of the red line. Well, look at this. This is ready, but I do like to have it rest for at least a few whoa, for at least a few minutes while I get to the other questions. I know we started a little bit late today. Um, okay, so so this is interesting because we have a Heather says, how long did it take me personally to neuroadapt? And Meredith says, how long to re-neuroadapt after a few days off plan? So uh, I'm gonna answer Heather's question first. How long did it take me to neuroadapt? It's been a long time, Heather, at least, um, never had alcohol, so I didn't have to neuroadapt off that. I, I would say that it, it, probably three weeks was the, was the roughest when I first went off sugar in 2003. And I'm not sure if it was so much neuroadapting to the taste of the whole natural food, but going through the detox of having been a sugar addict for 43 years and the diarrhea and the vomiting and the headaches and the, and the moodiness and the tears. So everybody's gonna be different. But as far as neuroadapt in terms of how long it takes for the food to taste good, that's gonna depend on how poorly or how well you've eaten. For everyone, it seems to be salt is the hardest because salt tends to be hidden in the food we eat, like bread and in processed food, whereas it's, it's different when it's sprinkled on top of the food, like in the case of potato chips and french fries where it actually has less salt. Until I stopped eating salt, I really never neuroadapted to food without salt. And that's the problem, as we talked about in Ultimate Weight Loss, having one foot in, one foot out. A clean abstinence is an easy abstinence, and it's easier to be 100% abstinent, abstinent from all sugar, oil, flour, alcohol, salt, than to dance the, with the devil and then have it sometimes and don't have it sometimes. It can if you will water fast, if you will go to True North and do a medically supervised therapeutic water only fast, you can neuroadapt in days. Your, it resets your taste buds. It makes them so sensitive that when we give you rainbow chard, you think you're eating sea salt. That's, that's how fast it goes. But without the privilege of going to True North 
and water fasting, it can take 30 days of not eating salt for this food to taste good without salt. That's why if you're in UWL, you know in July, we did 30 days without salt. And that's when I finally kicked the habit once and for all because I wasn't adding it to my food, but I would get lazy and buy the mustard and the ketchup and the salsa with the salt because it was easier. But in reality, it was because it tasted better because it had salt. And when it tastes better, unfortunately, I eat more. And it wasn't affecting my weight, but I didn't like that feeling of being out of control. And that little bit of salt, once you get clean, can do it for you. So as far as sugar is concerned, you never lose your taste for sweet. You know, is that you? Can you turn that off? Yes. Hold on a second. Okay. Yep, there we go. Who, would, who dare would call Kenny in the middle of a broadcast? My brother. Your brother? Well, put him on the phone. If Kenny's brother, Kenny, your brother's single too. First, we gotta get Kenny, Kenny hooked up. Come to Vegas, we'll hook you up with Kenny. Maybe we can do a little speed dating thing at lunch where you just sit with all the different women until you find one you like. So Heather, with, with sugar, you know, it, it, it took, it, it, I don't think I ever neuroadapted to the effect that I, it's not that I don't like sugar, I don't like the sweet taste, but now I can prefer it and get it just from eating an envy apple or eating a piece of sweet fruit, which is actually almost too sweet for me sometimes. I can detect the sweetness in, in romaine lettuce now, and it, it's amazing. I can tell, detect the, the saltiness in greens. So, so sugar, I think it took me about three weeks to, to have to stop having detox symptoms. But again, you always prefer the taste of sweet and salt because we're genetically hardwired to do so for survival. Taste buds are on the tip of the tongue for sweet and salty. For fat, it, you know, you asked me, I, this is a good question, Heather, and I never thought about it because it's been so, it's been over six years now. How long did it take for fat? I would say 30 days for me. Now, for a lot of people it, it come to ultimate weight loss with a diet much worse than mine was. And I've seen it take 120 days at the most for somebody to actually start liking and preferring a lower fat diet. The average is about 90 days. Dr. Esselstyn talks about this, which is why he prefers that people go whole, whole kale and not eat any added fat because it makes it easier to prefer the lower fat diet. So Meredith wanted to know how long to re-neuroadapt. Now Heather, um, excuse me, no, Kristen Bummer on her blog, Beans Not Bambi, has what she calls her reboot plan, and she has a really brilliant strategy that works for her when she does that. I think how long it takes Meredith to re-neuroadapt depends on how long, how long the indiscretion was. So if you had just a little minor slip and had some salt and some ketchup, it's gonna be different than if you literally did what some of the UWL people did, which is the 63 days of abstinence was the 63 days of extravagance. You know what Are I'm saying? Are we celebrating today? Is this well, is yeah, this now... is, well, this is now day day one. If you're, if you're following along, we're gonna be doing a not a bite to the right challenge where we're gonna focus on making the recipes in the 21 day recipe guide that comes with the Ultimate Weight Loss Program and make a pledge to not eat a bite to the right just till the end of the month. And then we've got a, a, a scale challenge coming up in February. So, you know, I think that you can neuroadapt pretty quickly if you've been doing a pretty good job, Meredith. You know, I think the best way to do it is to wait until you're hungry to eat. So if you've had a slip, don't eat until you're hungry. You know, the next day or the next meal and make that, for me, it's making that next meal alkaline, having it be vegetables, particularly greens, because you know that you're not going to eat that unless you're truly hungry. I think it takes longer, Meredith, to recover emotionally from a relapse than it does physically from the taste part because people in UWL, which are primarily women, tend to beat themselves up. It tends to, they, their self-esteem takes a big hit. And again, this is nothing to be embarrassed about or ashamed about. If you relapse, relapse is the rule, it's not the exception. What's gonna define your progress is whether or not you get back on plan and how quickly you get back on plan. So we don't give you any shame or judgments like, well, why didn't you do better? This is hard, guys. And again, it comes back down to the environment. You know, if you listen to the cram circuit lecture, you are genetically hardwired to prefer the most concentrated source of calories in your environment. And in nature, the most concentrated source of calories was about 800 calories a pound, and it was meat, and our ancestors didn't get that all the time. Now in your environment, you have food that is 4,000 calories a pound, that is more than four times as calorically dense as the foods that our ancestors evolved on and so that is why it's so hard to not eat at night and and this whole process you've got to trust me just 
for 30 days is all I ask. And if you are in ultimate weight loss, not if you're somebody not in the program, I will talk to your family for free and your husband, either or. I won't talk to people that aren't in my program, but I will Skype with them free for 15 minutes, maybe more, and explain to them the gravity of the situation and why the environment is so important. Please just give yourself 30 days of a clean environment. Ask your family. They can do it for 30 days. Okay, so, you know, good question, Meredith. Everybody's gonna be different, and I think you can pretty much get back on track within 24 hours. I think, depending on how bad the binge or the relapse was, it could be two or three days for most people, but it's not forever. But it's those first few days afterwards that, that's precarious. That's where people are very vulnerable uh, to slip again, right? And so, again, a clean abstinence is an easy abstinence, and those of us that do follow a sofa-free diet realize that it's, easier to do this 100%, believe it or not, than 99%. And until you have really fully embraced the concept of abstinence, you probably don't believe me. So very good question. Barb says, my goal for 2008 is to get stronger. How do I plan to do this? By making all the people around me weaker. No, that's not how I plan. I'm not sure. You know, JP's coming back to town tomorrow. I'm hoping to work with him. I got sidetracked by that hand injury where I was braced for a month. And, and so I've got to find a way to, to get stronger that doesn't involve the thumb so much. Maybe hired my personal trainer at the gym again if he's if he's still available. Uh, I'm thinking about getting some either a, a weighted vest because I walk a lot, or maybe even just using my ankle weights on my upper body. So when I mean stronger, I'm really more interested in, in building bone vitality and bone health. I'd like to be uh, you know in better shape, have arms like Yami and Kristen and Tammy and Michelle, but it's more about building bone health as I'm getting towards 60 so that's what i mean about getting stronger right you know preventing osteoporosis it's so funny as i watched the video you did the youtube with the mm -hmm. dietitian and the chef and the dietitian oh, that you made the mushrooms and stuff mushrooms mm -hmm. and they said yeah health stuff i don't exercise i know isn't that crazy how, how, how i changed it's how amazing how things change boy they just won't mm -hmm. stop calling Kenny, i'm sorry will they? this is on today that's crazy 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 well while he's doing that hold on back up i'm going to get some Okay. Almond milk because we're gonna open the mashed potatoes in just it's a mashed second. Mashed potatoes. Time. We're gonna open them in just a second. I've got two more questions from mastery <laughs> students. Uh, Lisa, for new people to the program, what is the most helpful thing to master first? I.e., cooking skills, environment, etc. Lisa, it's environment. I mean, you could be the most brilliant cook in the world, making this UWL food delicious. But as long as there's non-compliant food in your environment, that is what's gonna call to you. So yeah, it's important to have the food ready. See, to me. I don't even think you need to have cooking skills. I think you need to have prep skills. So I think you need to know how to shop. I think you know, need to know how to do some batch cooking. I have lots of free videos on YouTube on my webinar page, what I eat for a day, how to cook for the week. So I think you need to know how to batch cook. If you don't, then you can always hire somebody to do the prep and the batch cooking. I don't think you need a lot of recipes. That's why we're concentrating on the 21 day recipe guide. They're all delicious recipes and believe it or not, people in the program still haven't made all of them. So that's one thing I'd like to do with you guys starting on January 11th. Maybe we could do one recipe a day. You know, sauces will make things delicious. I, I have a couple of sauces, yummy sauce and ultimate sauce, but what yummy sauce really is is a template. And there's probably 20 variations. You don't have to make it as design. You can add, you can add ginger. You can add roasted garlic. You can add roasted red bell pepper. Fresh you can basil. Add fresh basil, wasabi powder. So, so it's a template so that you're not eating the same thing every day. But instead of focusing on the next cookbook and the next uh, cooking course, focus on neuroadapting, cleaning the environment, so that even a simple meal of sweet potatoes and broccoli tastes delicious. And if you need a sauce, have a sauce. Instead of thinking about recipes, think about eating food. Have beans and rice and other grains batch cooked, some in the fridge, some in the freezer, so that you can just pull them out and maybe heat up an already roasted sweet potato and put some beans on it and some greens and some sauce or some salsa. I think that I think having the ability to do that to, to prep and batch cook is more important than quote cooking skills, which you can learn. I teach hands-on cooking classes and and instructional cooking classes here in LA. I've got two classes coming up, guys, next week at Chefs Inc. at uh, at six o'clock and. Uh, Oh boy, let's see. I just realized I double booked myself last week. Next we're gonna week. do this. All right, so yeah, we're gonna open the pressure cooker while I answer Whatever the last question. In. I usually let it go a little longer. Sharon says, most important piece to your success. What's the first thing someone can change if they wish to get started? You know, that, you're, you're a health coach, Sharon. I'd like to know how you answer that. I think they need to change their mind. I think they need to change the way they talk to themselves, which is how hard this is and how many times I failed in the past. You know, 
I think they, I think one of the first things they can do is really make a commitment to really do their best to do this for just 30 days or 21 days. But I really do, again, what's the first thing they need to do, the first thing someone can change if they wish to get started. Karen, the first thing, again, they need to change is their environment. Because with a problem as difficult as this, I don't see long-term change possible if they don't change their environment. Mm -hmm. It's going to predict their success. And I know I talk about this ad nauseum, but that's because this is what we see after 2,000 people over and over, the ones that are successful long-term, not just white knuckling for a diet. So they, they, they need to, there's so many things. They need to change their, uh, sometimes they need to change their friends, who they hang out with and get new friends that support their way of eating. They certainly need to change what they're eating, the way they're preparing it. They need to be willing to change. You know, there's a saying that nobody likes change except for a wet baby. And most people won't change, unfortunately, until the pain associated with that change becomes less than the pain of staying the same. Even then, it's like that old cigarette commercial, some people would rather die than change. This commercial is, I'd rather, I'd rather fight than switch, but some people really would rather die eating their favorite foods than, than consider making this change. That's why I believe so strongly in food addiction and refined food addiction, because what other reason is it that people stay overweight and sick so long if it wasn't for food addiction? I mean, they know what to do, they know what to eat, but they aren't doing it, even though it's causing them harm. And that, by definition, is what an addiction is. So I think the first thing they need to change is their mind. And the second thing is their environment. And if they can have the gift of a clean environment for at least 30 days, I think they would see what a difference it would make. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish off the mashed potatoes. I'm putting about a cup of plant milk in this cup. I'm not sure how much I'm going to use. This time I have an actual mashed pota a potato masher. I did, uh, we used a, a weird thing that other time. So this was, this was like, I think, $10 at Bed Bath & Beyond. I got that today. So it's taking a moment for it to come down to pressure. The fuller the unit, the longer it takes to come down to, down to pressure. So what I need to do is I need to first drain the water out of the pressure cooker. Oh, by the way, next week, episode 58, we are going to be making these. Kenny, you can have up to, up to three or four of them if you want. These are delicious uh, pumpkin raisin muffins, and next week we are going to be making these. We're going to be shooting in the living room with John Pierre, hopefully, so we're going to come into the kitchen at the beginning and at the end, and we're going to show you how to make these pumpkin raisin muffins. So these were a, a huge hit at the True North Health Center. So now I'm going to be able to open the pressure cooker. Can't wait to eat. So what I need to do is carefully drain this. Okay. And where is my other glove? I don't want to burn myself. Again, if you sent me a holiday present or any kind of present, please let me know because lots of gifts came without anything on it. Okay. So, whoa, this always happens because always I'm in happens. such a hurry all the time. Okay, it's okay. My counter, hey, my counter's clean today at least. So what I need to do is drain this water, okay. which I'm going to do right now. So we're going to look at uh, AJ with her dogs. Okay. That's, that's like five, six years ago. All right. So I'm going to drain the water. So she's cleaning the water. There we go. Ready. I'm going to put it back in the Instant Pot. Okay. Don't forget you want to use your rack. And I've got all my vegetables and my potatoes. Put it right back in, nice and hot. Woohoo! this is hot. It's okay if one of the potatoes fell in the milk. Okay, I'll get a spoon of this. Okay, I prefer Yukon Gold Potatoes, guys, for the um, mashed potatoes, I, I keep, yeah, because they're fluffier, they're creamier, uh, and they're very easy to mash. You don't get, you don't have to peel them. You could, I suppose, but there's really no reason to because the skin More is fiber. just, More yeah, absolutely, especially because they're organic. So what I'm going to do is I don't really like to measure, so I'm going to kind of measure by taking a little bit of a measuring spoon and see how much and what I'm is using. This thing I'm putting in? So first I'm going to do some garlic powder. See, I don't measure, so I'm going to, so... Let's do a teaspoon. A teaspoon of garlic powder. We're gonna do a tablespoon of, I might add more of parsley flakes, flakes, not fakes, dried parsley flakes. It's real life dried parsley. Right, we are going to add. Benson's Table Tasty. Benson's Table Tasty. Let's start with a tablespoon of that. 
And then let's start with the whole cup of plant milk. And since this is bigger than what we did with Steve, let's do a half a cup of nutritional yeast. And then let's, uh, but you can see, even though this is eight pounds, seven pounds of potatoes and three pounds of parsnips and cauliflower, I mean, look how it cooks down to almost nothing. Oh my God, can you smell this, Kenny? This, this smells amazing. I smell it, wow. So, so to answer your question, Heather, about hiding vegetables in food, this is one way to do it. Another easy way to do it is with marinara sauce. Most kids like pasta with marinara sauce or pizza with marinara sauce. So make your own marinara sauce if you buy it. You're not gonna get it uh, SOS free. You might be able to get one that's oil and sugar free, but use my recipe for quick sun-dried marinara. And so what you do is then you blend it and then you you blend some spinach and some carrots or some beets in it and they don't know look how fluffy these are you guys wow and golden wow we use this as the base for the winning recipe in this year's iron chef look how quickly this made now people aren't hopefully going to know that there's vegetables in these so i'm not going to take up any more of your valuable time making this but i'll hold the camera i'll let kenny taste it and he can tell us how good this is i told him to come hungry today and uh Let's get them a nice serving. Now, what I would recommend to put over these, I don't need anything over this because this, this is just, to me, so delicious. But um, there's a gravy recipe on the Forks Over Knives website that I saw by Darshana Thacker where she uses rice, and there's no flour, and there's no nuts. A lot of the gravy recipes have flour and nuts, and so that's not my favorite thing to use uh, for ultimate weight loss and food addiction. So I'm going to try that very soon, maybe when we get off the air. But in the, Kenny, do you prefer a fork or a spoon? Let's do a spoon. All right. So, anyway, you. Well, I'll hold this. Uh, first, let me say goodbye to you guys, and then I'm going to have Kenny eat the mashed potatoes that we made, the nutrient-rich mashed potatoes. Thank you so much for watching another episode of Weight Loss Wednesday, episode 57. Come back next week. We're going to show you how to make pumpkin raisin muffins. Yes. So I wish you the happiest, healthiest, not only most prosperous New Year, but abstinent new year could you imagine what it'd be like if you went 365 days without sofas this is my almost 2200th day and i feel great i've never been this happy healthy calm stable brain slender body i don't have to think about it i eat what i want when i want as much as i want but of the right foods and a lot of potatoes don't be afraid of potatoes please go to my website eatonprocess.com consider signing up for the live ultimate weight loss conference in vegas to save $250 by February 1st. And this is the year for you to get both the health and the body you so richly deserve. I believe you can, and I'm gonna ask Kenny to uh, say goodbye to y'all and see goodbye, how the matter. everybody, and this food looks good. We gotta see, but does it taste good? Oh, wait a minute. You're looking at me there. Oh, there we go, who was I holding? I'm not, I don't even know how to. Sherry no. says bye. Bye, Sherry. Kurt. Kurt loves my earrings, and I love Kurt. Kurt, come to class with me. How is this, Kenny? Good? So good. This yeah. is really good. It is good. And do, can you really taste the vegetables, or you really can't, right? You can't. Right. So are they almost as good as Steve Middleman's? Pretty yeah. good. But a little bit more nutrition. So, guys, thanks so much for watching. Sorry about the uh, glitch at the Needs beginning. a little garlic, but it's awesome. A little bit more garlic. So next time, we're going to put in some roasted garlic. Mm. Sharon says, hi, Kenny. Lucky man to eat all that food. You're welcome, Jane. Love you guys so much. Happy New Year, and see you next week. Say goodbye, Kenny. Bye. 57.